Hello, everybody. Welcome to our youth night. I hope that you are doing well. I'm just going to make sure that we get some of these captions sorted out. There we go. We've already begun. So let's just throw that on there. Glad that you guys are tuning in. And uh, I know that it's a, it's a bit of a different time. Uh, we're doing it online still. Hopefully, hopefully next year we are not doing youth conference online, but we trust we won't be. We're glad to see people are tuning in. We've got some youth groups in. I've got my whole youth group is basically on the other side of this uh, computer screen. And they're in the fellowship hall. Some of them are standing and looking at me like, hey, he's actually back there. But that's okay. That's okay. It's complicated. I'm behind them. But a whole bunch of you are hopefully there enjoying some of it uh, with your youth groups. Uh, we're going to have some special guests tonight. We're going to have a bit of fun with a game. Uh, I was setting up for the game here, and some of my young people were like, this is actually going to be fun. I have no idea what's going to go on, but it's actually going to be fun. So uh, I, I hope that we enjoy it. Uh, I wish it was in person. Now, it's not, and that's okay. We're going to enjoy it. There is an in-person meeting going on right now. They're having an in-person meeting at P in Peterborough, and so I know a number of churches have gone there, and so we're grateful for their uh, opportunity to have that and be in prayer for them tonight. And uh, if you're not there with them, hopefully you've turned in here. Lord willing, next year, Youth Conference will be April 28th to the 30th. Uh, that's 2022. And we have Scott Pauley scheduled for next year. And uh, really looking forward to that. I exchanged some texts with him today just to make sure that we were still good. And we are. Uh, all right. So uh, I'm going to pose a bit of a question to you that you can be thinking about. And in reality, you can be commenting on. I know that uh, Pastor Holland is getting on here in a minute, and he's going to do the same thing for you with a different question. Uh, one thing that I'm going to ask is, uh, do you have a favorite youth conference memory? A favorite youth conference memory. Or it might be something along the lines of uh, like a, a youth conference stereotype or something that you're used to seeing at youth conference every year. Uh, it's just the nature of it. So um, – I can think I have a favorite youth conference memory. When I was growing up, I had um, I I was a teenager for the first youth conference, and we had some of the guys from Bethel stay at our house, and uh, that was a good time. Those were some good fellas. One of those guys uh, wasn't Mr. Baker, but it was his older brother Charles, and Charles accidentally left the curtain out on the shower. And when he turned the shower on, uh, he basically flooded our bathroom floor upstairs. And my dad was sitting in the basement watching TV and water started draining through the vents in the ceiling, dropping on the floor in the basement. So from the second level to the first level, all the way to the basement. So that was probably one of my uh, more memorable events when it came to youth conference. But uh, it's, it's just fun, period. I enjoy youth conference. There's always like good messages too. I would say one of the years, but I think some of you are probably going to talk about that. So sign on if you're with a big group and you want to leave a comment, just quickly sign on on your phone, leave a comment, and then you can drop back out. But we're going to have Pastor Holland hop on here in, in just a sec. We're still waiting for one of our youth leaders who is probably trying to help get his, um, probably trying to help get his youth group set up. And that's Brother Torres, Brother Sam. I don't know where he is. He said he'd be on in five minutes. That was 11 minutes ago. So um, I don't know what he's doing, but that's okay. We'll get we'll get him eventually. Let me bring Pastor Holland on here. Welcome, Pastor Holland. Thank you for joining us. Hey, thank you for having me. Good to be here at uh, we call youth conference. Youth, this isn't youth conference. Youth conference is in April. I know that. <laughs> that's true. That's true. The weather is way too nice for youth conference right, right it's now. It's not snowing. Yeah, it's not snowing out, so it can't be youth conference. <laughs> <laughs> it, that's right. It it really should be snowing. Um, but hey, we're gonna we're gonna take it take what we got. Hopefully next year the weather's this good in April. That'd be great. That would be not really likely. Good. not happening, but not April. likely. Not likely. Well, let's. Uh, we're gonna get started on our game, and so I'm gonna bring in these other guys. Um, let's get special guest. Brother Levi, welcome. Thank you for joining. I was going to bring Sam in. He's still gone. He's kind of, he's half here now. He's half here. Hey, he's everybody. running on. 
All right. Well, yeah. Thank you for joining us. And you're in, where, where are you? Your living room? Uh, I'm in my kitchen right now. I'm sitting in my kitchen island all the way from St. Thomas. So, Kitchen yeah. island in St. Thomas. Kitchen sounds like a safe place to be right now. We're bringing Brother Torres on. There we there go, is. Brother Torres. Hey. Yeah, you're you're the you're like the last one to show up, but you, but you got the best screen of the three of us youth guys. Nice. <laughs> are you are you always the last to show up? Is that what they're cheering about? Yeah, or? my uh, my Filipino heritage makes me late for everything. So <laughs> that's the way it is. That's okay. That's all right. I'm I'm late for most things. I am not known for being on time very much, so that's unfortunate. Um, but hey, that is what it is. So we're gonna play a game. I've talked to you guys about the game already, and so there's a reason why you guys are in places that look like they are not covered in soft materials. And I am the same way. I am sitting in the middle of a tiled hallway. We're going to play a game. Pastor Holland is going to uh, host this game. And the game is a numbers-based game between myself, Brother Levi, oh, that way, and Brother Torres. And in this game, Pastor Holland is going to ask us a question that's related to a number of some sort. Now we should have, if you guys are ready, should have a piece of paper and a marker, okay? Now, oh, or a tablet, that's good. And so we're gonna, we're gonna answer the question with what we think the answer is, and then we are going to hold it up in front of everybody else. Now, the person that is furthest from the answer the worst answer, the least correct answer, is going to have to roll the dice. So we all have a dice. You guys all have one? You guys got one? Brother Sam, do you have a dice? I, I'm, I'm going to get it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Give me one sec. <laughs> all right. Well, he's getting the dice. What do you to explain? If we roll it, there's a lot of noise going on there. I'm going to mute him. There, we, we've, we've muted him or them. Mute, try and mute all of Faithway so that somebody at Faithway can find one of these. That's awesome. All right. Once Whoever's the worst rolls the dice. And if you roll a one or a six, then someone from your youth group that's there with you is going to, just one sec, give you a pie of whipped cream in the face. So every wrong answer or worst answer that rolls a one or a six is going to get the pie in the face from someone in the youth group. So there is a reason why we are all in very high tile areas. So uh, I need to see if there's someone in my youth group who's ready to be the first person to get uh, um, the first person to get me and um, Levi, do you have someone? I imagine that Cole is going to be like the first one who really wants to get you. I do. Cole volunteered so, so quickly. He's ready. I got Cole ready. I think Tatum's ready. So I, I got people ready to go. Yeah. I saw Cole earlier. I thought he's definitely in. I've got a couple guys raising their hands. I've got Isaiah and Tobias, a couple, some, some of my junior hires, they're ready and they're going to make me pay. I'm sure if I get a wrong answer, I'll leave my glasses on for now. It's, well, it's, well, it's well, Oh, you've got the garbage bag. That was smart. I prepared. I thought about doing the garbage bag and then I didn't, I probably should have. Wow. You, that is like the largest dice you could ever imagine. I'm going to unmute you. Uh, let's see here. I was hanging in the front of his car. I was, there we go. Where was that? <laughs> uh, one of the teachers had it in the church, so I just grabbed it. One of the teachers. All right. Hey, good work. Good work. How many of you guys ran to go find one? How, for what? The, the dice? How many just of you ran to go? Look? I just made one boy go. <laughs> just one boy. Well, you picked yeah. the right one because he found the biggest dice around. Yeah. All right, Pastor Holland, uh, you you're, you can go ahead. I have not seen these questions or answers. I have simply, someone else did them and I forwarded them on to Pastor Holland. So if I happen to get them all right, it's just because I'm incredibly intelligent. That's it. Okay, sounds good. Um, I got some questions here to get going here in just a minute. They've been sealed and delivered to my house. No knowledge by uh, Pastor Jesse, so it's all good. Uh, I do have a question I want to throw out there, and this may or may not work depending on 
who's watching, who can get to a place to comment. Here's my question for 2020 in the first part of 2021, if you could define or describe the last 18 months of what's happened to you, uh, define or describe it in one word. What would that one word be? All right. So you can be creative, whatever you think. One word to describe 2020, 2021, the first, the last 18 months. If you do that for me, help me out, put it in the comments. My my wife is watching the comments. Uh, she's in charge of that. So if you do that for us to help us out tonight for the message, that'd be great. If you don't, I'll blow right through it and you'll never know. Okay, no worries. We'll just keep going. All right, here's time for the game. Question number one, boys. Are you ready? Question here's one. Now, I, I have a question before you ask that question. How much, how much, how much whipped cream did you guys get? Okay, here I'm gonna grab mine. <laughs> <laughs> I have one can. One can. Two hundred twenty-five. Two hundred twenty-five so cans. I'm, you're you're I'm looking at like, win. I'm counting on a win here. I, 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 I got. What I got is that? This, this is piping. Like. Mm. Oh, gross. This is good. I, we bought three cans. I guess my youth workers think I'm just an idiot. All right. Yeah, yeah. You have, they, they, they trust you. All right, you go ahead, Pastor Holland. All right, here we go. Question number one. I'll give you one that you may have a, a shot at knowing. How many laps are completed in the Indianapolis 500 race? All right, Indianapolis 500. How many laps in that race? Take a guess. So you all lose. <laughs> is, is this 200? It's 200. Oh, oh, I uh, no, no. All right, we're all the worst. Yeah, so, right. All right, yeah, let's yeah. roll. Here we go. Here we uh, go. We want to see those rolls, though. Can you roll it? Oh, we all, you all have to roll we were all the worst. Oh, yeah, I guess so. So four. what are the four. If you roll a one or a six, I rolled a five. Oh. I think Tor's already had a six. I had a six. Oh, yes. <laughs> so what's – okay, can, here, someone throw some uh, whipped cream in my face. Yeah, like a lot. Please, a lot. Just a little. <laughs> don't, 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 the old piping in the face trick. <laughs> <laughs> He's like decorating a cupcake. 500. Not it. <laughs> That's not uh, – we're not off to a great start yeah. there, Pastor Jesse. <laughs> not too hard. <laughs> All right. All right. Next one. Next question. Here my mouth. Rapid fire, baby. You ready, ready Torres? Yep. All right. How many people are in an Ogdoad? O G D O A D. How many people in an O G D O A D? Ogdoad. I have no idea what it is, but there's a number of people in an Ogdoad. Oh, snap. Okay, the answer is eight. Brother Torres is right, but Brother Devi is wrong. I rolled a three, I promise. Uh, uh, three. Three. All right, next question. <laughs> Sorry, we, we have lag here. No, it's all good, man. Let's keep. We'll, we'll, we'll take a little time. Here we go. Next question: How many plays did Shakespeare write? How many plays did Shakespeare write? Uh oh, this uh -oh. makes me nervous. Brother Jesse, you should be nervous. The answer is thirty-seven. Oh! <laughs> all right, I'll roll. A Damn. one or a six? Don't. Roll a one or a six. Oh, man. Man. <laughs> it was a one. All right, Isaiah. <laughs> Come on, Isaiah. Isaiah. This one's getting too all right, here it comes. Well, glasses, remove the glasses. Well, you, know, you can be merciful if you're into it. Not really. All right, go, go for it. 
Ouch. There's no mercy ah. there. No that mercy was, there. That was like an extra twist. That was the the dip. And then he dropped the plate in my lap. <laughs> Yeah, thanks a lot, Faithway. <laughs> There's the lag. All right. <laughs> All right. All right ready? I'm, ready. I'm ready. All right. Next question. How many players are there on a netball team? <laughs> netball. I actually knew a lady who used to come to our church that played netball. Yeah. yeah. How many teammates did she have? I mean, I can't tell you that. How many players on a netball team? It says maybe the question exactly. A netball team. So there's more than one. It's a team. Oh, so not on the court, like on the team. It just says how many hey, I don't make the questions up. I just read them. How many players on a netball team? Hey Google, how many teams are on a netball team? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, here we go. All right, go for it. Okay, the answer is seven. Oh yeah. Brother Tiro needs to roll the dice. It, can you see it? It's a one. It's a one. It's a one? Yes. It's a one. Oh, oh yeah, that's good. Water. <laughs> nice. Uh, nice. None of us have gotten out unscathed yet. Like we're all one, 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 one. All right, here we go. How tall was the world's tallest sand castle in feet? How sand. tall? Sand castle. Sand castle. How tall was the tallest, world's tallest sand castle in feet? You won't believe this, but the answer is 57. Let's go! What? What? How do you know that, dude? Like, how do you get that? I know my sandcastles. I know my <laughs> I'm wrong, but I don't have to roll. It's yeah. Torres, baby, you're on. I'm rolling. Roll the big die. Oh. What is it? That's a four. It's a four. All right. Good. We keep going. We keep going. <laughs> oh. All right. What year was the Lego group founded? Lego. So it's 19 something. So I need two numbers. 19 is the first two. What year was Lego founded? All right. We got a 28, a 39, and a 47. And the answer is 1932. Brother Archer. Six. Still snake eyes. Come on, baby. All right. How'd you get it on my back? <laughs> yes. You got a six, yeah. Eli, come on, man. <sighs> Oh, shut up, Faithway. <laughs> if you roll a one to a six, you have to roll. All right. You're my friend, right? No? Not really. All right. Go for it. <laughs> they, they really like the, the extra rub. Yeah, they give the man. I don't know if I should be happy or sad that the Faithway is not so happy. They're not cheering like that when I get a pie in the face. <laughs> Seriously. I guess I agree. I have to say that my kids are way better at pies than your kids. True. All of you. Yeah. And I'm the and I'm really good at getting them. All right, I'm ready, PH. All right, here we go. What wedding anniversary is the fruit anniversary? So you have your gold, your silver. How about fruit? What anniversary do you give fruit for? Uh Oh 
Oh, oh, oh. so the answer would be four. Ah, oh, you caught me kidding. Oh. <laughs> the guy who thought this game is getting beat up here. <laughs> Oh, he's safe. All right, here we go. What is the record for the highest jump on a pogo stick in feet? The highest jump on a pogo stick in feet. Here we go. Eleven point one five. Torres, way to go, brother Tiro. You're, you're rolling the die. Okay, here we go. I roll the one. <laughs> Don't be so honest. Don't be so honest, brother Tiro. I know. <laughs> We can put a little more on that. That's I don't feel fair. I saw how much Jesse got. All right, here we go. If you if you run it up, it goes up the nose. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow, it. that was that a good was one. That was a good one. Yeah, that was a good one. Oh, you enjoyed that boy too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, here you go. In, okay, I need the answer in centimeters. Not that it really matters to you. In centimeters, how long is the longest nose on a living person? The longest nose on a living person in centimeters. Pastor Jesse, how long is your nose? Oh, no. <laughs> it's actually forehead. That's normally what you judge me by. How long is the longest nose? On a living person. On a in living centimeters. person. I'm ready. I'm you ready, guys. You ready? All right. Whoa, 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 whoa. Here we go. In centimeters. I'm giving the same answer. I'm same ready. answer as last time. <laughs> oh, 17. <laughs> There's got to be someone. <laughs> There's got to be. The answer no. is 8.8. 8. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what are you thinking of? Like a, a horse? That's like a ruler. <laughs> like a witch? I don't know. <laughs> oh. That's a three. Oh. All right. Curveball. All right, here we go. What's the longest length of time a man has done the plank? Planking. Oh. You know this. Hours. How many hours did he plank for? I've heard this before and I forget it. I'll give you a clue. He's actually 62 years old. I I literally just watched this video. Oh, come what? on. Good life, Torres. I okay, here we go. The longest in it doesn't say how like minutes or hours, it just says longest. How many hours? Yeah, hours. How many hours he planked for? You ready? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, All right. The answer is eight hours. Eight? That's what oh. it here, man. Eight oh, okay. hours. You watched the wrong video, bud. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Yeah. Yeah. The same video about noses. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh uh, it was so on cool. one and then six, and then it went to a five. Yep. Lucky. All right. Here we go. What's the maximum? Number of times a paper can be folded. I didn't know there was such a thing, but the maximum number of times a paper can be folded. Stop folding your paper, Torres. <laughs> That's what I think. Um, the answer is nine. Brother Torres, you lose again, my man. I only lose if I roll a one or six. You're a bad player, but a good roller. That's a four. I'm going to check the weight of that weighted. dice. He's got weighted dice. Right. He's rigged the system. We the need trick is, dice not a time. one or a six on it. <laughs> he, dice made it like he was running four. to find one. He was actually shoving like loonies into the bottom of it. <laughs> yeah. 
you should have sent regulation dice to every youth pastor. I should. <laughs> That's right. All right, here we go. The human heart creates enough pressure to squirt blood how many feet? The human heart creates enough pressure to squirt blood how many feet? Someone cut yourself. <laughs> cut the wow. juggler. Start, cut the juggler and see what happens. All right, the answer is 30 feet. Guess who loses? <laughs> your your youth group is not cheering anymore. Like they started by cheering a lot. They have completely oh, stopped. There's a four again. Yeah, right. <laughs> what are you paying those girls that are standing there like around the dice? You're moving the dice for them, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, cheer. Go ahead, cheer. Why are they cheering? I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> I don't know either. Here we go. How many in millions, million, how many toothpicks can be made from a cord of wood? How many million? How much wood? How much wood can be cord of wood? How many million toothpicks can be made from a cord of wood? It would help if I knew what a cord of wood was. It's a lot. It's a lot of wood. Okay. A lot of wood. <laughs> All right. It's a shot in the dark. It probably wouldn't matter anyway. Even if you didn't know, you wouldn't. You wouldn't know. Okay. We have all kinds of answers all over the board. The answer is seven point five million. Oh, that's that's, that's not good. That is not good. All right. <laughs> okay, it's a lot, but it's not that much. <laughs> it's not yeah. quite two hundred million. Only a few chords. Only a few. Three. I'll take it. I'm Three. rolling like Sam now. All right, here we go. What anniversary is the platinum anniversary? So the fruit anniversary is for platinum anniversary. You ready? Yep, here we go. No, I'm not. All right, the answer is 80. 80. <laughs> So no one got it right, but Levi got it wrong. Go it's ahead and cheer, Faithway. Go ahead and cheer. No. <laughs> All right, roll that dice. Six. Oh, what? I, I, need need some, I think he's some of these Torres dice. I don't know what he does. Like there and there is a six. Just you wouldn't believe. I actually have a replica Torres dice mini right here. No foam and everything. <laughs> All right, oh, no, it's all yeah, Levi. All right, Noah's coming at it. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> oh, good one. I bet the beard makes it a little worse. Yeah, the beard is a game changer. Yeah. I would have known. Uh, oh, my, mustache is, my mustache is a little sticky. I bet it tastes nice. How many more of these do you want to do, Pastor Holland? Yeah, I'm, I'm, it's up to you, man. I get, I can go until you're Let's done. Let's do three I'm... more. One for each of us to get a pie if we happen yeah. to be bad. If anybody cares, someone dropped in the comments what a quarter of wood is equivalent usually to four by four by eight feet. All right, so no one knows what a quarter of wood is there, and they've given it to us in very technical terms. All right, thank you very much for that. All right, here we go. <laughs> in English law, English law, What's the smallest number of people that can constitute a riot? So when a riot goes on, smallest number that would constitute a riot. Eng yeah, this is English law, not American law, not Canadian law. Just think English law in case it makes difference to you. Ready? I'm ready. You ready? Right. Yeah. The answer is three. Oh, rats! <laughs> I almost wrote seven. That's my plan. And then I... You would have oh. had it. Oh. 
I'm happy about it. All right, here we go. It's my blackjack days. <laughs> Back in the day. I don't, I don't know that they play with dice. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that. I'm not works. Baptist. <laughs> how it works. Where you All right, here we go. Um, what is the airspeed velocity of a swallow? The airspeed velocity of a swallow, miles per hour. Not miles per hour. Okay, that helps. Miles per hour. That, that helps you calculate that in your head. I'm ready again. Oh, wow. Okay, the answer is 24 miles per hour. Probably me. It's you, yep. Okay. Here we go. I, should, I, should I kiss it for good luck or something? I'm doing something yeah. wrong. Yes, you should. Blow on it. Have your wife blow on it. It's all over the place here. A one! <laughs> you got to be me. <laughs> okay, this is all I got. So this is that's the end of the end of the can for me. So hopefully I don't get it next time. All right, if you get it next time, you have to use peanut butter. <laughs> oh, 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 you, you don't want to see that. You promise. Oh, I want to see that. I want to see that. Faithway wants to see that. I know that. Go for it. <laughs> that's oh, that's really watery. Is that just cream? Oh, it's the bottom of the can. It's dripping. I got light. I was trying to save some extra calories. <laughs> All right. Last question, I guess, then. On a dartboard, what number is directly opposite the number one on a dartboard? Do you know this? Right across, directly, I have no idea. Directly opposite the number one. I would never know. Torres is figuring it out. How many people are giving him the answers here? Come on, Torres. You're all wrong, but Jesse is the wrongest. The answer is ah. three. So, Pastor Jesse, the last roll goes to you. The last roll is up to me. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use the replica Torres dice. All right. <laughs> it has any, uh, any better you, luck? You'll, you couldn't roll one or six with that if you tried. Here we go. Here, Okay. How about this? How about this? I'll make you guys a wager. All Are right. you guys ready for a wager? You up for it? Yeah, what's okay. up? Levi, you got All peanut right. butter? Uh, yes. Okay. All right. Here's my wager. I'll roll it three times. If I don't get a six in those three, then a you both get or one. six or a one. Okay, six, six or, or a one. one. If I don't go get a six or a one in those three. You bought you guys both get a pie. Levi's is peanut butter. If I if I get it three times, I get three pies. If I get it two times, I get two pies. Okay, deal. All right. All right. Here we go. Six or a one. Here we go. Two. 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 It fell on the floor. And it landed in my plate, not right. So I'm going to pick it up. It wasn't flat on anything. If anything, it was a two, but... Four. So two plus four, six. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Can I, can I call you? Can I do it? Who wants it, Harvey? <laughs> you guys are the best. You guys are like the greatest guys. <laughs> All right. Because I, I've made mine extra. I'm just going to open my mouth read one. All right. Let's <laughs> wait. Let's wait. Let's wait. Let's wait. Let's wait. I don't want to. Me. He's going to punch me in the face. Me. Now, you might, want, you might want to have them not go up on your pie, Levi. Okay, Carl. Crunchy. <laughs> <laughs> 
crunchy or smooth? Oh, really good. That's going to get stuck in my eyes or something. Yeah, close your eyes, open your mouth, and don't let them go up, or else your nose is going to smell like peanut butter for like a week. Bang! <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah. All right, this is good. <laughs> Come on, Tato. I'm thinking. I'm thinking here. Okay, I think I'm. I think I'm ready. This All right, you ready? Let's do it. Let's do it. Oh. Uh, <laughs> that's disgusting. Bring it close. Uh, it's not very. Yeah, that's. Uh, that's good. That's oh, really good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. One of the I smell, like a, you smell like a s'more. <laughs> you smell, s'mores don't have peanut butter. Some of them do. <laughs> All right. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you guys for joining in. Thank you for also taking my wager. And thank you, Sam, for showing me how awesome the green oh. foam dice are. The replica yeah. foam dice. This thing is awesome. If anyone need, if anyone's heading to the Casino Niagara anytime soon, just hit me up for this. I'll give it to you. Um, no, don't. Like, literally don't. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks so much. I'm going to let you guys hop off here. Do you guys have a favorite memory? Do you guys have a favorite memory or something that was just like that stood out from Youth Conference? Uh, well, I became Filipino boy at Youth Conference, and it changed my life forever. Yeah. That's right. Was all that. I don't know if it's yeah. one memory for me, but I always remember like we always had to stay. We always stayed at people's houses. So I got lots of stories I can tell from staying in all kinds of people's basements. So that's what I think of when I think of youth Well, some, some of those people might even be watching right now. So well, that'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. <laughs> mostly all good experiences. Of mostly good experiences. Good, mostly. Mostly. All right. <laughs> well, thanks, guys. I'm going to let you guys hop off and get cleaned up. So I'll transfer there. We've got Levi gone. Brother Torres, thanks so much. And uh, there we go. Pastor Holland, it's down to you and me. Now, we don't have a lot of people commenting on your word, challenging. Um, that's the one that Pastor Brett posted. He said challenging. I was kind of thinking a word along the lines of... Um, one word was difficult. I was kind of more two words or hyphenating, eye-opening. I think it was eye-opening. It changed my perspective on a lot of things. That's what it helped for me. If anybody else is out there, go ahead and comment now. One word to describe this COVID time for you. One word to describe that. So, Pastor Holland, do you need to grab your stuff or are you good to go? I'm good to go. You're ready to go. You're good to go. All right, I'm going to go wash my face. Okay. Um, I'll be back, but you go ahead, Pastor Holland. Thanks for joining us for God's word and uh, get your Bibles out, everybody, pull them up on your phone and let's uh, hear a message from God's word. Cool. All right. Good to be with you tonight. And if you have your Bibles, take it to first Peter chapter two, first Peter chapter two is what we'll be in just a little bit. And I really do I would love to hear your perspective from a teenage perspective, how you looked at the year. And I, and I understand Pastor Brett's uh, perspective of it being a challenging year because uh, things are so different. Maybe different would be a good word. And I don't know what else teenagers went through. Again, I'm way past that. I'm, uh, pastor Levi is now our youth pastor, and he'd have a better perspective. But uh, definitely a, a unique year. We understand that we are hopefully coming through what has been the strangest year of my life, for sure. Strangest year and a half, I guess, now of my life. And so if you have a word, you can drop it in there. Uh, not a big deal. We'll talk a little bit more about that. And a little bit before we get going, though, before we get to First Peter chapter two, I do want to kind of acknowledge a few things. Number one, we're all getting tired of online events. I get it; uh, it's difficult. And I remember the first time I sat here at my counter and did a, a live video for the first time uh, over a year and a half ago, or about a year and a half ago, trying to connect with our people, and that was the first time. And then it became so normal, and Zoom calls became normal. But we're getting tired of the online. We'd much rather be in person. Like I said before, this is not really the youth conference that we've all known. I appreciate the effort uh, of having this tonight, but it's not the youth conference that we've all known. I have some great memories from youth conference times. I remember my memory is sitting on a bus with a youth group uh, of about 20, 25 of our teenagers, 
after a message and we all sat there and we just talked about what God had done for us. And I thought in my heart, in my mind, our youth group will never be the same after tonight. And it definitely uh, changed many lives. Some slid back to where they were and even farther than they were away from the Lord. And so a uh, difficult time, but uh, that memory sticks out, all kinds of good memories and funny memories and different things uh, that I think of at youth conference. But we'd rather be in person. I acknowledge this, it's hard to communicate and listen online. It is difficult. It's hard for me. I, I, I draw from people's reaction and their facial, facial expression, and I can't get that here. So it's difficult for me. Sure, it's difficult for you, but we'll do our best. And one more thing I want to you know just come clean on. Yes, I am wearing shorts right now. All right, so I, I have the, 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 the shirt on, uh, the button, you know, the, the collared shirt, but I am wearing shorts, which is typical Zoom or video conference attire, all right? So um, but I promise I'll do my best to communicate and connect with you if you'd promise just to do your best to listen and learn tonight. Uh, so I, I hope this will be a challenge and it helped you. I'm excited about the message. I'm excited about First Peter chapter 2, what we're going to learn there. Uh, the title of my message tonight is this, very simple, inside out, inside out. And, and it has absolutely nothing to do with the Disney Pixar animated film from about five to six years ago about a girl's emotions. We're not talking about girls' emotions tonight, and I'm thankful for that. We're going to talk about uh, the Bible and inside out. So nothing to do with that, but has everything to do with how you ought to live your life everything to do with the right way to live your life. Let me explain that here from 1 Peter chapter 2. We'll look at verse number 9. All right, if you have your Bibles, look there. I'll read it for you. The Bible says uh, in 1 Peter 2, 9, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Let me have a little word of prayer, and I'll give you some explanation uh, for, for what's going on here in this passage of Scripture. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for the opportunity to meet. We're thankful for your word. Please help me now to get across through these unusual means and unusual circumstances the truth from your word. That will be a help and a challenge to everyone who's watching tonight. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Inside out from First Peter chapter two. So my outline is so simple tonight. I mean, it's very easy to follow, and I hope it will be something you can remember. My first point is the word inside. Inside the Bible. Look at this in the Bible. The Bible says this, and if you mark your Bible or highlight in your uh, on your phone, highlight these words. The Bible says this right away. First three words. But ye are. But ye are. Circle those words, but ye are. This is a statement of who you are. Um, and we tried, in fact, to get another word in here. The word for last year was reset. It was kind of a reset, and we kind of define last year as challenging, difficult, uh, eye-opening, reset. We define the years by using different terms, and uh, here in this script ver verse, it says, but ye are. This is God defining us. Here's what you are. I'm going to tell you exactly what the Bible says you are. Um, we can let many things define us. If you think about it, in your life, you could let a failure define you. Uh, we all have uh, times that we fail. We all have times that we mess up. And some people allow a mistake or a failure to become a defining moment in their life. You can let failures define you. You can let circumstances define you. Many teenagers over the past year and a half have let the circumstances define, and not just teenagers, adults as well. Uh, some teenagers may use the word uh, for the last year, depressing, anxiety, discouraging, separation. Uh, all those things may be things that, that you experience, and we all experience that. Uh, there's times in my life that I experience all those things. I had a very traumatic experience during the midst of COVID last year in April, just as things were in the heat of, of, the, of the shutdown. My mom, who lived in the States, uh, went into the hospital. No one could go visit her, and she ended up passing away in the States. Very difficult time. 
And so the, that time was a very challenging, difficult time for me. And we can let those circumstances define us. If we're not careful, we can let other people define us. Maybe something that they call you or someone defines you or someone uh, describes you and you let that get into your head and let that define you. Don't let others define you. Sometimes we can let the culture define us. The culture is going to tell you how you should act, how you should look, what you should do, and we can let the culture define us. But the truth of the matter is this. Because God created us, he has the right to define us. Because he is the creator, he is the definer of who we are. And only God can really define us because he's the creator. And throughout the Bible, God defines us. He tells us who we are. Like just like our verse says, but ye are. I, I don't know who's watching tonight. I don't know who you are. I don't know your background. But there's some things I know about you because of what the Bible says you are. The Bible says this. That we're all disobedient. We're all sinners. All of us have disobeyed God. I, I know that. Without knowing you, I know that because God has defined us. We're all disobedient. We've all sinned. That's who we are. We sin by our nature, and we sin by our choice. And God defines us as sinners. But also, listen to me, God defines us as loved. <laughs> For God so loved the world. God defines you tonight as loved. You may not feel loved by other people. You may not feel loved at times, even by your own family. But the truth of the matter is God does love you, and he defines you as love. He created you, and he defines you as a sinner whom he loves. Your sin separates you from God, but his love reaches out to reconnect you to God. That's who we are. And I can tell you tonight, teenager, who you are. You are a sinner who is loved by God. I love this verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. In fact, it's a verse that I remember well from youth conference. One of my memories is a message preached by uh, Pastor Kenny Baldwin from this verse of Scripture. Verse, uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 11 says this, But such were some of you. He said, this is what you used to be. Such were some of you. He talked before that about some of the sins they had committed. That, that's what you were. But this is what the verse says. But ye are. Here's those words again. But ye are. Ye are washed. See, when you're saved, you don't trust Christ as your Savior. You get washed from your sins, and, and here God's defining you. If you're, uh, you've trusted Christ as your Savior, yes, you're a sinner. Yes, you're loved by God, but you are washed. And it goes on to say, but ye are sanctified. That's God's definition of you. Not doesn't matter what the world says. doesn't matter what your friends say. doesn't matter what anybody else says. God says if, you are, uh, if you've asked Christ to save you, you are a sinner who's been washed who's been sanctified. And then it says, but ye are justified. It may, you're, you're, you're right in God's sight. You've been freed from your sin. That's God's definition. And it says that you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God. That's who you are. You're washed. You're sanctified. You're justified. Others may define you. Culture may define you. You may look at your past and that defines you. But don't let those things define you. Let God define you. You are a sinner who's loved by God. And if you trust Jesus Christ as Savior, then you're washed, you're sanctified, and you're justified. Sometimes we're the hardest in ourselves. We define ourselves in a negative light. And sometimes we look at our social media, and I love what a preacher said one time. He said, we compare our blooper reel of our life to everybody else's highlight reel. See, on, on their social media, they, they post all the highlights of their life, and we know the deep, dark secrets and the ups and downs of our own life, and we compare our blooper reel to their highlight reel, and we don't measure up, and we feel worse and worse. And don't let that define you. You're defined by God who created you as someone who's a sinner, who's loved by God, but you can be washed, and you can be sanctified, and you can be justified by the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. That's what the Bible says. You are a child of God. If you have asked Christ to save you, all those who received Christ, he gave power to become the son of God. You're a child of God. Don't let anybody define you differently. That's who you are. Even look at this verse, our verse again. It says this, but ye are a chosen generation. You know, in fact, I remember from youth conference, 
this was the key verse one year, and that was the, the, the key to the whole conference, being a chosen generation, talking about uh, how young people and, and we can make a difference. And I remember that from youth conference. Ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. Royal talking about uh, kingly and a priesthood talking about your connection with God. You don't need anybody. You can talk to God today. You are a royal priesthood. That's how God defined you, defined you. And a peculiar people. That's a strange sounding word, peculiar. If you call somebody a peculiar person today, that's not a compliment today, right? Oh, that, that guy, he's a little peculiar. Uh, that girl, she's a bit peculiar. That, that's not a compliment, but God calls you a peculiar people. And by that word peculiar, it means that you are owned by God. You are special because of ownership. Not special because you're weird. Not special because you're strange. Special because you're owned by God. You are a peculiar people in that God has purchased you and you are a child of God and you are owned by God. That's who you are. And so I want you to remember those, those first three words, but ye are. That's the inside. That's who you are. You don't have to um, change that. You're only changed, That only changes when you ask Jesus Christ to save you. He changes you from the inside out. On the inside, that's who you are. Saved, loved, child of God, peculiar person, royal priesthood, chosen generation. And the Bible has so many things. If you are struggling with uh, uh, your identity, if you're struggling with uh, your self-esteem, let God define you. Stop letting it. Don't let anybody else define you. Don't let anybody else tell you that you can't do this or can't do that. Let God define who you are. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a peculiar people. All right, so that's the first part. That's the inside part. But I don't want to stop there because that's not where the verse stops. Look at the verse again. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people. And look at this part of the verse. That ye should. That ye should. That's the outside. But ye are, that's who you are inside, that ye should. See, here's the secret to the Christian life. The Christian life is meant to be lived inside out. What you do with your life, how you act, flows from understanding who you are. But ye are that ye should. Circle those words in, in your Bible. Highlight those words. Here's what you are. Here's what you should. This is the key to the whole message. What you should do flows from who you are. Your life is lived from inside out. Many of you go to church. That's what you do. You go on Sunday. Maybe you go Sunday night. Maybe you go Wednesday night or to youth group or different things. That's what you do. Many of you do that. And I did that when I was your age. I went to every service. That's what I did. The question is, why do you do what you do? The answer should be because of who you are. See, it's not really, we shouldn't be duty-driven. We should be identity-driven. This is who you are in Christ. It's not just your duty to go to church. You don't just go because you have to. You know why we should go to church? There's several reasons, but I should go to church because I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. I'm a Bible believer. And because that's who I am, it naturally flows that I want to go be with other believers and learn what the Bible says. It flows from who I am. I am a believer. I am a Bible follower. Therefore, I want to go to church. See, it flows. Here's what the verse says, that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Let's look at those, those words there. He it says here, show forth, that we should show forth. That word means celebrate. Celebrate. It's like uh, when the raptors won the championship, and there was a parade and a celebration. They were showing forth the victory. They were showing forth their excitement. And here the Bible says, because you are in God a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, then you should celebrate that. Let that show forth. Let that come out in your life. Show forth the praises, the excellence. Show forth the excellence of God. Show forth the praises of of him who's called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Listen to that phrase, out of darkness into light. 
That describes salvation. The day I got saved, I was 11 years old, and I asked Jesus Christ to be my Savior. And maybe you're watching today, and you've never asked Christ to be your Savior. I don't want to assume that everyone has. Maybe you haven't yet. And God today is calling you out of darkness and trying to show you that, that there is a better way. There is light. He is the light, and he can show us uh, a, a better way. And knowing Christ is our Savior, that's salvation. But it's also understanding who you are. Don't be in the dark about who you are. Come out into the, his marvelous light. Going through life with this, with the not in darkness, with the blinders off, knowing this is who I am. Are you confident in who you are in Christ? Are you confident today? Can you say, I am saved? I am a child of God. He loves me. He created me. He's got a plan for me. Uh, those are all things we find in the Bible. That's who we are. And because we have that, we should show forth, celebrate his praises, his excellence, uh, the one who called us out of darkness. Don't walk in darkness. Walk in his marvelous light. Let me show you one quick, quick example of this. Uh, look in your Bible in 1 Peter chapter 2, skip down to verse number 11. If you look in the Bible, you'll see this pattern all over. Look at verse number 11. It says, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. Look at that verse. Do you see that first part? The first part is talking about who you are. And the second part is talking about what you should do. But ye are that ye should. The first part says, dearly beloved. So know who you are? It's telling you again, you're beloved, you're loved. And it says this, you are strangers and pilgrims. That's who you are. If you are saved today, the Bible calls you a stranger and a pilgrim. It means that, that uh, you're walking differently. You're living a different life. You, you have hope and eternal life, and you have a a Bible to guide you, and you have a Holy Spirit to help you, and you have a Savior who loves you, and, and you have this, and you are guided by this. You're not, you're a stranger and a pilgrim in this world. This, this old song, this world's not our home. We're just passing through. And so we're strangers and pilgrims. That's who we are. You know, the truth matters, if you believe the Bible, then you won't click with the culture. If you believe what the Bible says and you follow the Bible, you're not going to click with a lot of things in the culture. The culture is not following the Bible. You're a stranger and a pilgrim. Just accept that fact. Accept the fact that you're going to be uh, a different because you're following a different rule book. You're following a different code. You're following a different relationships. That's who you are. You're a stranger and a pilgrim. And here are the verse. Look at the verse. You're beloved. You're a stranger and a pilgrim. So what? That's, what you should, that's who you are. So what should you do about it? Well, you should abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. <laughs> that's the outside. The inside part is you're a stranger and a pilgrim, but the outside is that we're not going to follow the flesh. The flesh we're not going to follow our natural desires and just do whatever we want. We're going to keep those things under control. That's what we should do. And that, that pattern is throughout the Bible here. Simply God saying, because you're a stranger and pilgrim, you don't have to follow the natural away you can be different you can you can have a victorious life victory victorious over sin and over the flesh and all those things that's what the bible's saying here that's what you are and then what you should very simple verse very simple outline don't forget that you should that's what we do but ye are but ye are that you should. Now, if we were all together, I'd have you say that with me. I'm not going to do it here online. I'd have you say it with me. But ye are that ye should. I hope that, that that message will ring in your heart. This is who I am because God tells me this is who I am. And because of who I am, this is what I'm going to do. It flows from the inside out. Will you live your life from the inside out? Sometimes as a youth pastor, I think if I look back in my years, I was a youth pastor for 25 years, maybe my preaching and my teaching seemed more like I was preaching outside in. Here's what you should do. Here's what you should do. Here's what you should do. Oh, and I was sincere about that, and the Bible does talk about that. But I want to make sure that you understand the Bible is so clear. What you should do flows from who you are. Don't forget. Your, see, your identity 
determines your purpose. Your identity determines your path. So it's who you are, but ye are that ye should. We define 2020 a little bit by a few words. Let me encourage you, don't let your circumstances define. Don't let, we define 2020. We had a, a word, the reset, it was a reset. It was uh, difficult, it was challenging. We can define 2020 or 2021, but don't let those things define you. Let God define you. Don't let negative comments define you. Let God define you. Don't let the devil define you. Let God define you. The God who created you has the right to define you. He says you're a sinner who he loves. Have you accepted Christ as your Savior? Do you have this relationship? It was on one night at one instance where I asked Christ to be my Savior. This could be your night for you to trust Jesus Christ as your Savior. You could talk to a worker tonight about how you can know Christ as your Savior and understand what Christ and what the Bible says about you. And if you have trusted Christ as your Savior, will you live from the inside out? Will you be the one that Christ has called you to be? Celebrate who you are. Celebrate the fact that you are a peculiar people, a royal priesthood, someone who's saved, someone who's called. God has a plan for you. Celebrate that. Live out the praises of God. He's called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. He, celebrate the fact that God is transforming you and changing your life. Celebrate that. Let me bring it all together with this one, one simple illustration. I hope we'll, we'll bring it home for you. Most of you are involved in social media, I'm sure. Uh, maybe Instagram, probably TikTok. Uh, obviously, I would be more involved in the Instagram than TikTok in my generation. On those social media, there's two parts to your social media. There's your bio, right? You put in your bio, this is who I am. If I've written my bio, I might say, I'm a, I'm a husband. I'm a father of two girls. I'm a diehard Cleveland sports fan. I'm not really proud of that sometimes, but I'm a diehard Cleveland sports fan. That's who I am. That, that's, that's in my bio. That's who I am. And then I post, and in my, the post would show what I do. Here's some things I did. Here's where I was. Here's my vacation. Here's what I do. My bio tells me who I am, my identity, and then my posts show what I'm doing. Let me ask you about your soul. Do, do those two things should match up, right? If I say in here, I'm a follower of Jesus Christ, but my all my posts don't show that I'm following Jesus Christ, that doesn't match up. Your bio ought to match what you post. Who you are should determine what you should do. And, and just as our social media is a outshow or outflow of who we really are, so our life should be. But ye are that ye should. Will you God, let God define you, and will you celebrate who God made you by living that out? I appreciate so much the opportunity to be here. I know it's difficult, but I hope right now that you think about how this message applies to you. If you need help making a decision or want to talk to one of your workers after, that'd be great. But uh, I want the, those words to ring in your mind, that verse to ring in your mind. But ye are that ye should. Living the Christian life from inside out, and let it flow naturally from who God defines you as. Thank you so much for letting me preach to you tonight. I've, I've enjoyed it, and I hope you've learned something tonight. Pastor Jesse, if you're there, we're here. All right. Thank you, Pastor Holland. That was fantastic, and uh, we, we, we enjoyed it, and it was a great challenge, and uh, a best the best reminder that what we're doing on the outside really isn't the central focus. It's who we are on the inside. The outside is going to flow from it. So thank you very much. We are going to uh, conclude this meeting. Thanks for joining with us. If you're doing another teen activity, I hope you guys have some other fun things planned, or some of you already did some fun things before this. Uh, one thing I do want to remind you of next year, we are planning in-person youth conference end of April 28th to the 30th, and it's going to be with brother Scott Pauly. And uh, we'll have some other guest speakers as well, but that is where we're, uh, we're, we're kind of starting there. So I hope that you will uh, take part in that with us. We hope that you have a great rest of your summer, and uh, we look forward to uh, seeing everyone again when that time allows. Thank you, Pastor Holland, once again. Thank you, uh, Brother Torres and Brother Levi uh, Tyrrell for all of that uh, 
entertainment. That was fantastic. All right, everybody, thanks so much, and we'll see you again. Have a great weekend.